Hi, my name is Dan Bozzo. We're talking about programming for artists. In the last video, I talked a little bit about what a programming language is and how it's like learning a foreign language and that it's made up of little bits. We also talked about some of the basis of a language we're going to use in some of the videos called C++, how it's a compiled language, that it takes lots and lots of bits and the things that we want to do, crunches them down to make machine code that the computer understands. We had this diagram where we're saying we're going to include libraries of super clever knowledge that other people have written that we might want to access. And maybe as we get a bit smarter or we have a specific thing we want to do, we can build our own libraries so we could reuse them. We take these libraries and we have just a little bit of source code that we're writing, that we're interested in. And then we ask the compiler to crunch that all down and we get an executable thrown out at the end. No. I want to talk about some of the bits that programming languages are made up of. And this is common to pretty much everything. And the most basic part is a variable. And a variable is something that changes. If you think about uh, my studio here. I'm working in my studio. I've got racks and racks of equipment, people shouting in the corridor. And I try and store it. I try and keep it tidy. And I have lots and lots of things that I want to store. Some of its information, some of its uh, components, and I can take a generic box and put stuff in. And I can say, this is a variable, and what's going to be in there will change. So if somebody says, where's so and so, I can say, it's in box 17. So I can call this box 17. I could call it Fred, or I could call it um, number of people coming to a barbecue, and inside it will have data. So I could put a message in here for somebody, and they can say, well, where's the message? And I'll say it's in box 17, and they go and have a look, and it contains something. So a variable is like a container for something that changes. In this instance, I've got a generic container. I can put anything in it. In programming languages, the kind of things that we can put inside these variables or containers are things that change. If we take an analogy of a barbecue, um, if we're going to have a barbecue, there's a bunch of bits of information around it that can change, that can vary. The weather, the time, the location, the amount of people coming to the barbecue, um, what they're going to eat, the names of the people coming to the barbecue. And we could write a program that deals with one barbecue, and we just hard code in 17 people are coming, we're at this address, the weather's going to be like this, it'll be at this time, this many people are vegetarian or vegan or have nut allergies or some other thing that'll catastrophically make them explode. But that's only good for one barbecue. And what will be great is to have things a little bit more flexible to say, uh, well, we know basically how to have a barbecue and the basic things, but some of those things will change depending upon what the weather's going to be like and how many people are coming. So we could set up something automated about how that works. And if you can think of expanding what you do with having a barbecue and having somebody that runs your barbecues for you. And they're awesome at running barbecues, but they need some basic information to be able to run a barbecue weekend after weekend after weekend. They need to know where is it going to occur, what are the names of the people that are coming, what's the weather going to be like, what time, how many people, what's on the menu. And there's lots of different data in there. So variables can be these things. Weather, have a look inside the variable called weather, it's got a name, sunny, cloudy, rainy, cold, warm, time, location, etc. So we can have some basic things with our variables. And the common ones in programming languages are numbers, whole numbers. And we call these integers or ints. And that can be one, two, three, four, five, etc. Now, integers only are whole numbers. And the funny thing is, if we take 3 and divide it by 2 and store it in an integer, it isn't 1 and a half. It'll be 1 or 2, depending upon whether it rounds up or down, because it doesn't deal with decimal points. So we can use a different kind of number variable called a float or a double sometimes 
And what it means is it's a floating point. It has a decimal in it. So we can get 4.154, 127.52, and it deals with fractions or decimals. The other thing that we can do is we can have letters, either in individual letters as a character, a, a char, which is A, B, C, etc. Or we can arrange those chars together, and this is more common, we refer to them as strings. And often strings are quoted, and we can have the name of a person inside that, or a location, or any other piece of text. And we can have long strings of text if we want. Now, the strings are actually ending up being representations of numbers. The interesting thing is you can't add different types of things together, which is why we get variables. There's one more variable that we can have, particularly in C++, that's really useful, which is a bool or a boolean, named after a mathematician um, who dealt with logic. But in computer programming, a boolean can be true or false. Essentially, actually, what's in there is a one or a zero, and the computer evaluates it to be true or false, but it's really useful for using toggles and things like that, because when I look at a Boolean, I know that it can only be one of these two states. Is a barbecue happening or not? So we can make all kinds of variables depending upon what we want to do. Some programming languages just have one kind of variable. You make a variable, and you can shove anything in it. They don't mind what type of thing you put in there. So I can put um, pens, and batteries, and phones, and pen lids, and pieces of paper, all in the one box, which is fine. I, mean, I can't add them all together. but. I can have variables, and I don't know which type is which, because I just give the variable a name. But with C++, I get a little bit stricter, where I have to separate out my integers, my floating point numbers, my strings, and my booleans, in exactly with the same way that I'm storing stuff in my studio. This is electronics and connectors. This is memory cards, and so on. And in our programming languages, if I want to make an integer, I just declare it and I say, I want to make an integer variable. Somewhere I'm going to store numbers, and I'm going to give it a name, and then I can put numbers in there. So this could be... Number of people, and that's the number of people that come into my barbecue. And then I'm going to have a, a string saying address. And then I'm going to have a boolean for vegan. So somebody can be vegan or not. And then I can add all of these things together and know that inside the number of people integer, I can just look at it and say, how many people are coming? What's the address? And is somebody vegan? Knowing that I can't add different kinds of things together. So I couldn't say the number of people uh, and the address doesn't make any sense. But I could add one address and another. I could add name of people. together. So if I have somebody coming, um, my friend Mahir and my friend Jane coming, I could add Jane Mahir, but I couldn't add the number of people and the name together. So seven and Mahir doesn't work. That's a rough and kind of messy introduction to the idea of what variables are. They're just these little boxes that you can put things into. And in C++, we need to say what kind of boxes they are so that it's what's called a strongly typed language. It means it compiles faster. And when we're programming, initially it's a little bit pickier to set up, 
but it's much, much clearer as we start building bigger programs. Next time I'm going to talk about some of the things that you can do with these variables and loops and move on and do some more descriptions.